So we have even more leaders now that are coming forward with their stories of misconduct from Soul Survivor founder Mike Pilavachi. And you know what? These two former leaders, they came out and they gave interviews the same week that Christian singer Matt Redman released his documentary called Let There Be Light, where Matt, along with his wife Beth, they also talked about the misconduct that they received from Pilavachi during their time at Soul Survivor. So it appears now that it is all coming down on Pilavachi. More are having now the, you know, the bravery to come out and speak about this. And those that are coming out to speak are encouraging others to come out and speak. Well, we're going to talk about what these two leaders had to say about Pilavachi and how Soul Survivor handled this when they were first confronted with the allegations. Welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story? How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A few different ways you could do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. Or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. Link is in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they hit the main YT platform. Some exclusive links as well. Plus, you can comment censorship free on all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Of course, it was back in July of 2023 when Mike Pilibachi stepped down from all roles at Soul Survivor. And this, of course, is after the allegations and accusations came in about Pilibachi and the misconduct on his part that spanned decades, basically his entire time of running Soul Survivor. And those that have come forward now have described this as more of a cult than an actual youth ministry that it was set up for originally. Now, I mentioned both Matt and Beth Redman, who released their documentary on April 8th called Let There Be Light. And you could actually view that entire documentary. It's a little over 30 minutes long. It's up on uh, Matt's YT channel. I actually have a link to it up on my Patreon for those that are already a part of that. Uh, you can get uh, access to that there. But they talked in detail about how they too had experienced this type of mistreatment from Pilavachi and how you know leaders within Soul Survivor and the Church of England completely botched of this when they were you know handled you know the allegations and everything they tried to ignore it they tried to say oh that's just Mike being Mike just sweep it up under the rug right you know Matt Redman was very bold in talking about how he actually did experience some misconduct now this was prior to him meeting Pilavachi, um, and his was of the, you know, the S kind. And when he explained this, you know, he opened up to Pilavachi, and after he told him about it, what did Mike do? Well, he took it upon himself to engage in these wrestling matches with Matt Redman, and also massages. This was a common theme uh, among those at Soul Survivor that were around Pilavachi at the time. The only thing that Pilavachi did with Redmond was he actually helped him report the misconduct to police. But then, sometimes, according to Redmond, right after he would tell him about, you know, what happened to him when he was younger, he would immediately then engage in these wrestling matches. Look, this is just absolutely, this guy was sick and twisted. This is what he did this with all the guys there at Soul Survivor, right? So, now that we have Redmond's story coming out there in full, because he released a statement at the time in July of 2023 but he didn't go into great detail about exactly what happened. Well, now we know what happened. But Redmond is not the only one. We also have two former leaders of Soul Survivor who are now both pastors of separate churches in England. And that is Tim and Pete Hughes. They gave an interview to The Telegraph detailing their experiences at Soul Survivor. Now, you got to understand, they started out, you know, as part of the youth movement itself. And then they worked their way up into leadership positions. Now, this was back in 2004. They had reported misconduct from Pilavachi uh, to then at the time, the chairman of Soul Survivor, that being Graham Cray, who by the way, has been under investigation 
from the Church of England for mishandling these misconduct claims. Now, the Church of England put out a statement that said that they have concluded their probe into Cray. They are not releasing the detailed report, and then they should, but they're saying that they're taking the appropriate safeguarding measures now uh, in light of what they have now learned. It, not good enough for me. I mean, look, you got to be transparent as it comes to these things. But Cray was serving as the chairman at the time here that both Tim and Pete Hughes were at Soul Survivor and they reported the misconduct from Pilavachi. Now, what did that include? More of the same. The wrestling matches, the massages, and you know, similarly to what we've heard from others as well, when they reported this, they even confronted Mike himself about it, and he was just trying to brush it off as like, oh, it just we're just having some fun, right? That's all it is. But then upon reporting this to Cray, he too tried to sweep this under the rug and say that it really wasn't anything that you needed to worry about. It's just Mike being Mike. And, you know, they were left traumatized by this because this occurred on more than one occasion. And then it got to the point where they had to leave. They left Soul Survivor and they've talked about how, you know, they've had to receive a lot of counseling over what's occurred. Again, this, we're going back 20 years, but still it, it's, it's something that's hurt them over the years that thank God, you know, they're both, both serving as pastors still to this day, but they're not completely over it yet. They talked about the fact that they're still trying, you know, to face this each and every single day, confronting it and acknowledging for it for what it was is something that they needed to do. However, at the same time, they have also decided to forgive. It's pretty amazing. You know, going through what they did, what they experienced, and really being betrayed by leadership within Soul Survivor who wouldn't even take their accusations seriously or try to just dismiss it as them just being silly. But they are choosing to forgive, which is remarkable. And at the same time, they are encouraging and hoping that others too can come forward and share their stories. They say that all things that have been hidden are now coming into the light. And that is so true. Remember, God's judgment, you know, the judgment starts in the house of God. This is why we are seeing right now so many ministries that are coming under fire. Whether it's Soul Survivor, whether it's IHOP KC, whether it's TD Jakes in the Potter's house, they are all coming under judgment. God is exposing all of this darkness. If you take a look at what Pilavachi did, I mean, for, again, from the very early days of Soul Survivor, there's been hundreds that have come forward with these allegations. We're not talking about just one disgruntled former employee. We're talking about hundreds of them. Similar stories. This was not a ministry in any way. It was a cult. It was a playground for Pilavachi to do his misdeeds. So the Hughes brothers, again, you know, big respect to them for coming out and sharing this information. And, and look, again, it comes the same week that Matt Redman dropped his, you know, you know, in the light documentary, exposing more about Pilavachi and what he did. Look, there's no coming back from this as it, as it comes to Pilavachi, him getting back into mystery. He may try, he may try, but it's just not going to happen. It's not. No one will take it seriously. He could try to launch something, but no one in their right mind should partner with this man in any way whatsoever based off what he has done. He's hurt a lot of people that are still trying to deal with this trauma to this day. It's a shame. But I'll have some more information on this for you in the description. And I welcome your thoughts as well in the comment section. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. What this is is an altar call. I've been doing this since 2016. No matter what it is, that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So for anybody watching now, if you're somebody that has not yet accepted Christ, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then 
You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.